Hi, now I've always enjoyed sitting in hides. It's been my favourite way of photographing wildlife and that doesn't matter whether it's a hide on a nature reserve or one of these paid for hides or my own little canvas hides or my own wooden hides that I've got on this estate. I just enjoy sitting in hides and waiting for the wildlife to come to me. And I will say you see far more wildlife when you're sitting quietly inside a hide than you ever do if you walk about in the countryside. Things appear that you just didn't know were there. Now, I've been using the Butio single person hide now for several years. It's become my main hide, but today I'm using the more old fashioned um, British style hide, I'm going to call it. Unfortunately, you can't buy these anymore. So you've got to arrange to have these made yourself, aluminium telescopic poles. You can Google this and you'll find an aluminium tube supplier but getting the fittings, that's the hard part. So you need the fittings to make it telescopic and then you need the fittings at the top as well to join it up. So you really need someone with a bit of engineering knowledge to be able to do all that. But the reason I'm using this high today is we are now in the second heat wave in August 2022. It's getting incredibly hot. 30 plus degrees and if you sit in the beauty of hides which I think are, are wonderful hides but when the sun's on them in a heat wave it's like an oven inside there it gets so incredibly hot so I'm using this hide today it does mean you've got to put the poles into the ground well it is slightly soft in this patch so I can get the poles in the ground and then I'm using this army camouflage material which is cotton and whereas the beauty of hides is a polyester material that that shiny sort of pvc feel to it that's why it gets so hot in the sun this is far cooler so i'm going to be sitting here from about 6 30 in the morning till about 10 30 and it's going to get hot once the sun clears these trees behind me so this is going to keep me a lot cooler So we have a zipped door at the back. There's removable panels on the sides and then there's some scrim netting that just hangs over the, the bar here at the front. I just ha hang the netting over the front and it drapes down. There's tabs on the top here so you can put the guy ropes on. You only need those when it's very windy. It's not waterproof, it's shower proof. But the amount of time I spend sitting in one of these in heavy rain is, is not that often. Now the place we're photographing is just a shallow scrape. In fact, there's two shallow scrapes right next to each other. And the one over there is slightly bigger. And because we're in this heat wave and we haven't had much rain at all during July, August, the water level is quite low. And all I'm going to be doing is just wait and see photography. I don't know what's going to come in front of me. I'm just going to sit in the hide and birds will come in and that take no notice of me. The hide is amongst the hard rush, so it doesn't really stand out. If you was to put the hide up, on that spit over there where the bit of land is jutting out, then the birds are far less likely to accept it. This immature and slightly scruffy heron had no problems with the hide, accepted it completely and just carried on fishing. Very noticeable that all the fish it caught were very small. There's no large fish in this little scrape. It dries out almost every summer and becomes far too small. I've only ever seen kingfisher down here once, but at the moment it would be ideal for kingfishers because this particular area where the heron is feeding is full of very tiny fish in very shallow water so they'd be easy for the kingfisher to catch. I have seen herons feeding on insects before. I watched one once catch dozens of mayflies and here you can see this one is very interested in that damselfly. But I think the damselfly is well aware of the heron's interest in keeping a distance. Perhaps early in the morning when the damselflies are still dormant, it probably does feed on quite a few of them. Exactly what it caught there, I don't know. That seemed very small. I've stopped the video and tried looking at individual frames and I can't really see some sort of water beetle. And a few stills pictures and a different heron still an immature bird but 
older than the previous bird, and then the little egrets. These are quite common on this scrape. Now I was underexposing these pictures by two thirds of a stop typically because it's a white bird against the darker water, but that's because I use evaluative metering. If you use spot metering, you'd probably have to overexpose by perhaps two thirds of a stop. The important thing is to only use one metering pattern and get used to it. If you try to use different metering patterns, I don't think it'd be possible to ever get used to when you need to under or overexpose. Little egrets seem more accomplished at catching small fish. Perhaps the grey heron is better with larger fish. But this bird was really hoovering up the fish very, very rapidly. Just at the end of this clip you'll see the bird use its left hand foot to disturb the vegetation and the water and hopefully expose a fish and push it out of the vegetation. Just about now. Now green woodpeckers have been calling regularly every morning I've been here but there's one very very close I got a feeling he's in the trees to my left hand side I'm going to try and yes he is we're going to move the lens ah, I can just get on him it's an immature bird and it's not a great photograph because he's got too much shade going across the, the side of the head and the belly. Then the little egret decided to take off and I'm still very impressed with the OM1's ability to track a bird in flight. If I can keep it in the viewfinder it's usually in focus. Now I know from all the footprints in the mud around the water that there's a lot of visits from deer. Now I can't tell from looking at these footprints whether they're fallow deer, muntjac, roe deer, but they're certainly not sheep. There's no sheep come down here. And it's when you're sitting there by the side of the pool in this hide you start to see what species are coming in. This is a muntjac. Amazingly efficient at hiding away a muntjac. They can disappear into a small bush and you just wouldn't know they were there. They don't run away from you so much as hide from you. And here there wasn't one muntjac but two. And when you see them side by side the right hand mammal is the bigger of the two. So I suspected we were looking at a mother with its youngster. And when it tried to suckle I was even more convinced. A male roe deer. I also saw these almost every day. The other thing that was surprising me is the wind is blowing from the hide towards the deer and you'd think they'd have picked up my scent and not been very happy about it. But they weren't, they'd come out and drink. Got a nice set of antlers there. And this is a different animal because one antler is much smaller than the other. Wood pigeons and stock doves were frequent visitors to drink. So here we have a stock dove. I'm taking this with a Panasonic GH6 which is what I'm using for video at the moment and also with the 150 to 400 mm Olympus or OM lens. Now this is 120 frames per second 4K, I'm manually focusing, takes me a few 
moments to get it into focus, then I decide it's too big in the frame, so I want to remove the 1.25 built-in extender. So I throw the switch, and you'll see the extender move out the picture in a moment, a band will go across. Unfortunately, what I didn't know, there's the band, what I didn't know is when it does that, it stops the camera recording, it turns the recording off. Now it doesn't do that with the OM-1 camera, it only does it with the Panasonic GH6. So I didn't realise the recording had stopped and I didn't get the bird launching into flight. I did have several other opportunities but always on the other side of the water where the bird is against that vegetation. I would prefer it if the bird was this side of the water away from those grasses. But stock doves very rarely drink for very long. They come down, take a couple of sips and then they fly away. Wood pigeons on the other hand will linger. They might be there for two or three minutes, but it's very rare for stock doves to stay longer. Here's a wood pigeon. And thanks for watching.